impact. 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 There we go, guys. That is what I call the Steve Brew routine. <laughs> so basically, I've come out this afternoon and I wanted to test a few things that I'm working on. I wanted to shoot some new, uh, some uh, long range rabbits for you and capture it on video. I've got a new video camera. Um, but unfortunately, there's no rabbits out. There hasn't been for the last few days, really. I think it's because we've got high winds at the moment and these winds just seem to keep the rabbits in sheltered areas or underground, whichever. But there's not been many rabbits around, so I'm not going to be able to shoot any this afternoon for you on camera. However, what I thought I would share with you is um, a routine which I do very, very often, whether it be with air guns, um, shooting pellets or slugs, or whether I'm shooting like 1,000, 1,200 yards with my centerfire rifles. And the idea is to shoot and engage long-range targets first time. Because if you're out in the field, uh, or out of the local shooting range and you're shooting 200 yard, 300 yard targets and think you're a good shot. Sorry, that doesn't necessarily apply in real life conditions when it matters. So shooting groups on paper is one thing. Yes, it takes skill, but a real shooter is able to apply the shooting and basic fundamentals and marksmanship principles in the field when it matters. I've always said that practice and training are two different things. If you look at my Facebook group, Precision Air Gunning, you will see that I've made a, I've, I've wrote a bit of a document um, and shared it on the group and explaining the differences between training and explaining the differences between practice and how they're different. But combine the two of them together makes for a good shot. Now, <clears throat> this rock that I've just engaged is about the size of a packet of cigarettes, probably the size of the palm of your hand, and that replicates the size of a rabbit's head or the size of its sort of shoulder chest shot and um, or the kill zone. And what we're trying to achieve here is we're trying to engage long range targets with first round hits, or certainly get as close as you possibly can with them. Um, and the, like I say, the goal is to engage them first round hits, no matter what the distance. Because in the field, if you see a rabbit, you'll get one shot. You'll shoot, you miss, it's gone. Occasionally you'll get a follow-up shot, but not very often. So, this particular rock is 188 yards. I've dialed in 23 and a quarter minutes of elevation. And uh, I was holding wind subject to what the wind was doing at the time of the shot. That comes down to experience. And you can practice this drill or this, this um, routine in the same place throughout the year because if I come and do the same exercise tomorrow, the wind will be different, the environmentals will be different, temperature will be different, pressure will be different. So the fire solution that you calculate will therefore be different and you'll have different wind speeds and directions to cope with and to calculate. So. <clears throat> What I like to do here is, um, like I say, range a target, use the Kestrel, use your ballistic programs, whatever you use, measure the wind at various different distances, come up with a fire solution which you think is right. And the goal, like I say, is to dial in your elevation, dial in or hold for your wind, whichever you prefer, and engage long range targets, first shot. That is the goal, and the closer you can get is the better shot you'll become and the better shot you are. And like I say, this rock's 188 yards, which, like I say, represents a rabbit's head. And like you saw there on camera, 188 yards, three shots, bang, 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 all on top of each other in the wind. And what I'll do is I'll zoom the camera out here just to show you and give you a, a representation of how far that is. Like I say, shot with the BRK Ghost in 2.2 caliber with the R&D slug barrel. Like I say, uh, uh, you could probably hear the wind as well, not to mention see the wind on the 
trees. But that's just a drill I do, guys. And um, like I say, I do it often once the gun's set up. Um, if there's nothing happening, you know, you're not going to learn nothing by not shooting or not pulling the trigger, but by coming up with these theoretical fire solutions and putting them into practice in the field will only make you a better shot. Hope you've enjoyed that, guys. Just something a little different. There's no rabbits, unfortunately, for me to shoot tonight, so I thought I'll do something different. Plus, it gives me a chance to try my camera out. So, like I say, hope you enjoyed it, guys. Something a little different. Thanks for watching. Okay, guys. So, it's a little bit later on tonight. And like I say, still no rabbits out, so I thought just before I pack away, we'll do another exercise. Same thing. Um, engage small targets at long range. First shot. Um, this one's further distance. It's 195 yards. Um, distance isn't a problem, I've dialed my elevation. What is different about this shot is not only the, has the range increased, the target size is reduced, as you can see, and the angle to the target is different in relation to the wind. So the wind effect will increase. So I'll come up with a calculation. I'm going to hold what I think is the correct hold, and I'll, I'll engage this target first round hit, hopefully. I'll certainly be very, very, very close, but... The objective is to hit this first time. Okay, here we go. Right. Okay, on target. Wind holding steady. Impact took the top off. Impact again, top. Last one. Wind increased, holding point two. Impact three for three, 195 yards, and that is a tiny, tiny rock. Like I say, trajectory not a problem, wind slightly different, it's more of a full value wind, um, although it has decreased, but the whole purpose of the exercise again is to engage long range targets, small targets at long range.